Oh, okay. <laughs> no. I think it's 45. I think I need to learn the schedule. Okay. <laughs> okay, so welcome to the second uh, lecture by Tanegawa. Okay, so uh, yesterday I, I gave you a definition of this uh, bracket flow, which is a weak solution of a mean coverage flow. And then today and then tomorrow, uh, what I'd like to do is to give you an um, uh, outline of the uh, recent existence uh, results of uh, mean coverage flow. Okay, so, but before I do that, uh, uh, let me give you a quick sketch of um, known result. Uh, so, existence results for a uh, bracket flow. So, there are many uh, results about um, mean coverage flow, uh, but uh, so let me describe only the one that is uh, relevant to uh, bracket flow. And um, so, uh, so let's see, so no results. Oh yeah, in particular, uh, I will be describing the uh, mostly uh, time global existence of weak solutions. And so uh, I skip mostly the uh, res existence results for smooth case. Um, okay, so uh, so the, the well-known result is uh, well-known um, approach is uh, so-called level set method. This is a method. So this is a, a work by Chen Gigagoto and Evan Sprack. Evan Sprack. Uh, it's 91, and this is an approach that um, you are given a, this gamma zero, which is uh, given as a boundary of a domain, omega zero. Okay, so this is initial, your initial data. Right? So you have a omega zero, and then you have a boundary. And then uh, we, what you can do is you define this uh, function well, it doesn't have to be precisely this one, but uh, this is the initial data, which is a distance function uh, from x to this boundary, gamma, zero. If uh, x is inside the uh, omega, zero, and uh, your minus distance to x to uh, gamma, zero, if x is uh, outside, Okay, so it's just a distance function from this, your initial set. And then uh, you consider the following uh, problem. Solve the following problem. This, uh, this is phi t divided by number of phi is equal to divergence of number of phi divided by number of phi lengths, uh, where x uh, and t is Rn. Uh, let's see, ln cross uh, zero infinity, and uh, phi at uh, is equal to phi, phi zero uh, for t equals zero. Okay, so, for zero. so uh, you st you solve this uh, nonlinear PDE starting with this uh, initial data, which is a distance function uh, from this given uh, boundary. And uh, so this is, uh, so formally, uh, as you can see, uh, this is really, the left-hand side is uh, uh, normal velocity of a level set. Okay, so this is uh, formally, uh, each level set, let me write this gamma, um, so let's see, A of T, Okay, this is probably not a good notation, but uh, x uh, where uh, phi of x t is equal to a, okay? Each level set uh, where a is a real number. So this is a level set of this solution. Uh, is, see, note that left-hand side is the velocity.
And uh, this right hand side is the mean curvature of this level set. Okay? So formally at least it satisfies the velocity of this level set is equal to mean curvature of this level set. But because of this nonlinearity, uh, you may have some problem because when the gradient is zero, for example, this becomes sort of degenerate uh, PDE. So uh, you have to solve this uh, uh, problem by so-called uh, uh, as a viscosity solution. So you have to solve this. Okay, so you have to solve this by uh, so-called viscosity as a viscosity solution. Okay, so ni nice things about this problem is that you can actually solve this, and you can solve this, well, with a, let's see. You have to make some assumption of this, uh, this gamma zero, maybe say C1 or C2, okay, so no, not so regular, irregular, but uh, given this, uh, then you can actually solve it at time globally, okay, you can solve it for all T. And the other nice things about this is that this, uh, so uh, this, this uh, is a unique solution, okay? So there exists a unique solution too, unique solution. So uh, at least formally, you can say that uh, this, the, the one that in particularly uh, where A is equal to zero, okay? So this uh, is, you can think as a generalized mean curvature flow equation, mean curvature flow, okay? At least, and this is a closed set. This is going to be a closed set by definition, by, you know, uh, by the way, yeah, this phi become a continuous function, for example, or even Lipschitz, okay, but maybe not any better than Lipschitz in general. Okay, so this, you can have a very good regularity for this because of the degeneracy at most Lipschitz, okay? And uh, so this is a closed set, and it's actually uniquely determined. Now, so you might wonder, okay, so is this, a, for example, bracket solutions, okay? Well, in general, whenever you have singularity, then it is, po it is possible that this guy may have some interior points. So this phenomenon is called fattening phenomena. So whenever you have singular, singularity, after singularity happens, maybe I should say, after singularity happens, a so-called fattening can happen. That is, the, uh, this set can have a, a interior points. Okay? You, you want it to be hypersurface-like, of course, you know, it's after mean coverage flow, but unfortunately this may have some kind of uh, interior points afterwards. Typically, it may have interior points uh, after singularity. So uh, this is not a, um, in that sense, it's not a bracket flow, but um, well, there are some special cases. If this gamma zero is a mean convex, then um, this solution stays mean convex, and uh, in this case, uh, fattening actually does not happen. Okay, so this gamma t zero remains mean convex. Mean convex, of course, means yeah, mean curvature is uh, non-negative, okay, mean, uh, re remain mean convex. And also, um, fattening doesn't happen, and in this case, in fact, this guy is actually bracket flow, that, that is no, okay. It's a bracket flow, and there are many things that's no, actually, much better than the fact that it is a bracket flow, but there's also analysis of singular set and so forth, which I, I don't really talk about in this. Uh, course, but at least I know it's, it's a bracket flow. And also, actually, also unit density. And uh, let's see, and with equality, in fact, with equality in the uh, equation six that, that, that is this uh, bracket, the, the one that appeared in the brackets, so a uh, definition. Okay, that, that is, brackets in, bracket the formulation was inequality. But for mean convex case, you know, it's actually equality, even. And this is a work by Metzger, 
Uh, I should say. Uh, 0, 0.8, I think. Yeah. Okay, so that's no. And also the other nice result, no, is that uh, this is by Evans and Sprack. That's, uh, what's it, 95. Uh, is that, uh, in fact, almost all level set uh, is, in fact, bracket flow. That's also no. So, but what this means is that, uh, so almost all means with respect to this A height, okay? So if maybe not all, not all level set is bracket flow, but almost all level set at least is a bracket flow, okay? So that means with respect to this A, yeah? So this almost all A, okay, so for almost. Uh, almost all, almost everywhere, <laughs> eh? uh, it's a bracket flow. And also, this is a unit density flow, too. Okay? Not, not only bracket flow, but it's a unit density flow. Okay? So that's, that's known. So that's one uh, example where, uh, you know, I define this sort of complicated looking uh, bracket flow, but it, it, the, this level set does satisfy that you know, uh, relationship. Okay, and others, uh, okay, so this is about level set, but there are other method, other method that gives rise to uh, this uh, bracket flow, uh, which I, I, I don't have time to talk about, but this is, uh, uh, well, one is the so-called uh, phase field, phase field method, uh, or maybe uh, the name of the equation is the so-called allen kahn equation. And, uh, uh, well, I, I don't talk about this, but the singular limit of this Allen Kahn equation gives also rise to the, uh, this uh, bracket flow as well. Okay. And that's uh, work of uh, Tolman, Ilmanen, and so forth, others, Ilmanen. Many, many works about this. Uh, I think uh, I, I don't, but his work is perhaps the most basic one. Okay, so there are many others, okay. And also, uh, there's uh, also this is by Ilman, but so-called elliptic regularization method. This is also, uh, I guess, Ilmanen, and um, which also gives rise to a bracket flow. Okay. But these I don't talk about now. Uh, so the one that I'd like to talk about today is the, uh, has um, clear motivation. Okay, so let me explain what is motivation. Most of these results, I must say, uh, at least concerning the time global existence, well, deals with mostly um, this kind of situation where your boundary uh, is given as a uh, your, your boundary is given as a, uh, as a, the, uh, sorry, your initial data is given as a boundary of some domain. For example, in the, in the case of level set, that, that's precisely the case. You have to have some domain and then the, uh, your initial data is given as a boundary of this domain. Okay. Now, uh, so let's consider, for example, the one that is not in this type, type of situation. For example, uh, imagine you are given a square and then just do this kind of splitting, okay? Take this as in your initial data, okay? Well, uh, what should be the evolution of this under the mean curvature? Okay. Well, mean curvature flow is the one, well, in this case, it's 1D, so maybe I should say curvature flow, but curvature flow is the one that reduces the length. So uh, what happens to this picture should be that, uh, at the, at the instance t equal to zero elapse a little bit, there should be some kind of rounding, right? Because mean curvature flow is like a PD equation. So the, the, anything which is, has a corner should round off. So here it should be rounding off like this instantly. Now here, what happens is that here is, there's actually a, a, a very strong curvature here. 
you can actually reduce the length by creating, well, maybe it's hard to see this part, but the creating the um, triple junction like this, okay? So immediately, you should create something which um, is of this shape. Like this, and the same here. Okay, and how about this crossing? Cross. Well, actually, apparently this is just but two straight lines, so you know there's no curvature really. But you can still actually ch reduce the length by going to the point. So you just look at this guy here. So what you can do is that you can actually reduce it by creating also two triple junction, so-called triple junction, like this. Okay, maybe I don't know how to, what happens, but like this. Okay, this has less length than this cross. Okay, so uh, so that's that's a, that's a part that changed. Whoops. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, something like this. Yeah. So uh, what you expect is that well, okay, so there's this two triple junction here created here. Actually, here there's a possibility of going this way or this way. There's no sort of no uniqueness already at this point. But after this happens, then uh, things start evolving, um, and uh, so. Well, it's hard to kind of imagine what will be the after a while, what happens, but maybe uh, <laughs> it's hard to, okay, it's very poorly written, so I don't try. <laughs> but anyway, so something like this, you want this to happen, okay? And this is the kind of things you um, observe in the uh, motion of so-called grain boundaries of uh, uh, polycrystalline. And, uh, okay, so that's, that's uh, one thing that I, I, I ma I'm making observation. Now, this is um, actually, uh, there's also uh, some aspect that you have to think about this picture. That is, I had this picture, but here um, I'm implicitly assuming that this domain, uh, they, they are all different sort of labeling. Okay, so this, this is, maybe I should write it this way. Okay, so I'm kind of distinguishing, I, I'm saying that I, I'm viewing these domains to be different to each other, so they don't kind of mix. But if I assign, okay, well, let's say this is the same as this one, for example, and here's maybe different. Okay, now the evolution I expect to be slightly different because, well, here's the same, more or less. Here's the same also. Now here is now, the center is going to be some, somewhat different because this and this are the same. So to, to have less length, it's actually better to, to cut this part and then move like this. Because they, they're the same thing, so there's no, nothing to separate them, okay? I mean here there was, there are different kinds, so I want to have to have separation here. But here, there's no separation. So the evolution is going to be somewhat different for this labeling, okay? So uh, the point is, if you have, you're dealing with this type of domains okay, moving, then it's not just a boundary that you, you should be looking at, but you also have to have some kind of assignment to the domains, or, or I, I say labeling, okay? So, um, now, the existence result for this type of uh, 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 mean curvature flow was actually not known, uh, more or less, at all, even for actually 1D case. Okay, so that, that's exactly the one that uh, I'd like to tell you about. So the existence, oh, and uh, I might say that this is more like a multi-phase uh, multi uh, mean, mean curvature flow, okay? which I think in the second week, uh, I think uh, Felix Soto 
is going to talk about a lot. And also, I think Mantegazza, Professor Mantegazza is also going to talk about the flow of networks. And that's actually this type of things, okay? That's, um, that he, I think he will talk about. Um, so I hope that this is going to be somewhat a good preparation for next week. Now, so let me explain the results. So CRM, let's say 2.1. And this is a work I did with uh, Kim, myself. And this appeared just recently from uh, now uh, the Institute. Okay, so uh, Kim is here, by the way. That means here. Now, so let me say, assume the following. Assume that gamma zero is, uh, oh, by the way, so this is about the co-dimension one existence theory, and a higher co-dimension case I, I, uh, is not known, at least in this generality. Okay, so this is co-dimension one case, so I, uh, so I use n plus one as an ambient space. Uh, is a rectifiable rec k, a rec n that I defined yesterday, so, and also, uh, and closed, okay? So closed here means it's topologically closed, not, not in the sense of like compact with no boundary, but it's really topologically closed set. And also, um, I suppose I assuming that there exists some C zero, C such that um, the, uh, this set, initial set, uh, does not grow too fast. So it, it, it can grow at least at most exponentially, okay? This is finite, okay? Ah, oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, saying that uh, my initial data is, uh, is a closed set and also country and rectifiable. And um, the measure can grow, but sort of linearly exponentially at, at most. Yeah. So that's the assumption. And also in addition, um, I assume that um, the complement is not connected, is not connected. Okay, so that's not, that's not a much of the assumption. I mean, I'm, I'm, I want this to be at least, there are at least two components. Okay. <laughs> Now, uh, so this is a kind of situation I'd be sort of interested in. Now, as I said, I need to make some assignment of the labeling, okay, to, to specify what kind of domains we have. So I choose um, E, uh, so this is E01, dot, 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 E0N, um, which are no empty open set, and the mutually disjoint, disjoint, let's say, disjoint, such that um, uh, the uh, they comprises the uh, E zero uh, I is the uh, complement of gamma zero. Okay, so that's it. that's that's sort of the picture you should have in mind. Okay, so I, I assign these numbers from one to capital N. And uh, there, are, there are choices that you can make here, right? It's not unique. Okay, I, I could say choose some component to be the same numbers if you want, or they could be different. But yeah, I, I should say that at least I want this N to be, N to be bigger than or equal to two, or otherwise it's kind of be going to be a trivial solution. So 
So you can think these domains to be uh, representing certain kind of phase. Okay, each domain gives somehow is a, a certain uh, phase. Okay, so now the conclusion is that conclusion is that um, they, so the conclusion is really that uh, you have a mean curvature flow starting from this initial configuration. Okay, with uh, your initial data being gamma zero. But now, it's, 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 you, you don't have only have a, this moving gamma, uh, this uh, interface, but also um, you have the domain which is moving at the same time. So you, the existence involves two things, domains moving and also the boundary, okay? So conclusion is that there exists um, this one parameter family of domains for each i, so t existing for all time, um, I from one to N, and also a bracket flow. There exists a bracket flow mu t, or ex okay, so, so there exists a bracket flow uh, mu t. This also existing for all time, and uh, with the following property. Okay, so I, I need to uh, explain the relationship of these two things. It's a little bit complicated. So, well, first uh, property is that these e i t, so e one t to e n t, these are, are open, open and disjoint for all t. Okay. So they are like really are moving domains, okay, which is these kind, okay. They are, they are say open disjoint. And uh, let's see, uh, and their initial, uh, their initial um, time, it's, it's a given one, that's uh, zero i. Okay. And number three is that this bracket flow start out with this um, uh, gamma zero, basically. Okay, so that's, of course, you, you expect this to be true. I mean, at t equals zero, your, your, your measure is the surface measure of the initial uh, uh, data. Now, um, and so you have this two things, that the bracket flow and these domains, and uh, well, so I, I need to also explain the relationship of these two things, but uh, to explain it, I, I need to introduce a little bit more things. Uh, let's, let's mu to be the uh, product measure of this, uh, your bracket flow and also time integration. So this is a measure uh, in space time. This here is a space integration and this time integration, so that's uh, mu is the space-time uh, measure. And also uh, for shorthand, let me write gamma t to be the, um, the uh, Rn plus one minus uh, the union of Ei t, i from one to n, okay? So that's just a definition. I call the uh, complement of these, okay? And uh, one thing is, yeah, w w this is like hypersurface, like, and uh, then the conclusion is that we then we have number four is is that this gamma t, this which is this one, okay, is is in fact even though I define this way, it's it's the same thing as the boundary of the um, e i t. So, as I said, EIT is these moving domains, and the topolo this is a topological boundary, by the way, not the reduced boundary sense. But topo this topological boundary is the same as this, okay? So there's no interior developing, basically, of this set, okay, no interior point. And this is equal to also to, um, to the slice, time slice of this mu. So, meaning X where xt is in the support of mu, okay? So this may be a bit confusing, but so this is, a, so this mu basically 
uh, if, if, it's, if it's a shrinking sphere, for example, it, it is the one that uh, the support of this mu is the one that looks like this. Okay? That's, a, that's a sort of space uh, time track of this motion. And if you slice it by t equal, uh, time t, you know, this is really the, you know, the sli time slice of this uh, history of this motion. And that co coincides with this boundary precisely. Okay? And this is true for all t bigger than zero. And uh, finally, the last uh, property uh, is uh, somewhat also important that this, this domain moves somewhat continuously also. And so if, if this domain just vanishes right away, for example, then that's not a good thing. So uh, the last property five is that this EIT, each E something, uh, this moves uh, continuously Uh, with respect to uh, Lubeck measure, Lubeck measure n plus one for t bigger than uh, equal to zero, and actually one half held continuously. Again, with respect to um, uh, Lubeck measure for uh, t strictly positive. Okay, so when t equal to zero, uh, it may actually, it's just continuous, but actually, uh, when, when time elapsed, elapsed a little bit, then it moves con held continuously. Okay. So, um, and uh, I should mention that this set can be, after a while, become empty set, okay? So I'm not say, claiming that they are not empty. So, uh, after a while, in fact, they are mostly will be empty, except for one, okay? Uh, that is, uh, you see, for example, if you have this picture, you can imagine that these guys shrinks, and you know some of them become empty set until everything vanishes except that this E4 will be the whole space. So uh, note that until one become the whole space, you have non-trivial measure, right? Because uh, otherwise, you know this. I mean, as long as you have some boundary, you have non-trivial support. Right. So until everything vanishes, you, you do have this some kind of non-trivial uh, bracket flow. So that's the result. And uh, yeah, so as I said uh, in words, uh, so this, this uh, number four and five uh, guarantees that this mu is non-trivial. Uh, in the sense that, uh, okay, I, I didn't mention this yesterday, but um, well, the problem of bracket flow is that uh, bra bracket flow could be, well, because of this inequality in this, you know, equation number six, uh, the tri trivial solution could be also bracket flow. <laughs> so maybe I should say that. Okay, so no. Uh, whenever, whatever gamma zero is. Okay, for any gamma zero, uh, I, I could have a bracket flow which is just um, Hn restricted to gamma zero at t equals zero and at zero where t positive. Okay, so this, you see, at t equal to zero, you are, you are, you have, your initial data is precisely what you want, but you can make measure to be zero totally, just sort of vanish right away. And this also actually satisfies, you know, brackets definition of bracket flow because it is defined in terms of inequality, you remember? So once, you know, T become positive, if you say it's zero for anything, you know, this inequality is satisfied trivially, okay? So bracket flow could be trivial, <laughs> but, <laughs> At least this, this uh, guarantees that, that this solution is not trivial okay, because this domain is moving continuously, so you, you cannot just vanish right away. Right? Okay, so, um, so the, for the today and tomorrow, what I'd like to do is to explain the, um, how you show this existence, um, which is uh, modeled um, 
to modeling the uh, Branke's original proof of the uh, existence, uh, which sort of remained, um, an, uh, uh, which remained somehow uh, not understood by anybody, and uh, we kind of worked out, worked through on this, and then uh, figured out what to do. So. Uh, a lot of idea comes from Bob Brackett's original uh, work from 78. Okay, so, um, so the, what we do is, um, you know, you, you cannot uh, construct somehow time continuous solutions right from the beginning. So what you do is, you, we, what we do is we construct a time discrete approximate solutions first, and then at the end you take a limit. And um, I, I believe that uh, this, this kind of construction uh, was never done before, and, uh, uh, and uh, I believe that uh, how you do it is very interesting to you, I think. So, um, okay, so let me uh, start. So the just idea of uh, construction. And but, but this paper itself is uh, fairly long and uh, very complicated. In, in publication, it become about 100 pages, and uh, so it's fairly complicated. But I, I, I'm hoping that I, I give you some kind of um, outline that that uh, um, and also point out some interesting um, aspect of this construction. All right. So uh, now the problem is the following. So we are given uh, this um, gamma zero, which is only uh, country rectifiable, okay, and closed. Now I have to move this set by mean curvature somehow, but you see, this guy may not have mean curvature well defined at all. It's just country rectifiable set, okay. It, this may not even have a bounded, so-called bounded first variation, if you know about barifold, okay. So this, this may not have a well defined first variation even. So uh, you have to do something about this. Okay, so um, so that uh, by the way, so also uh, for simplicity, let, let me assume that um, for the rest of the talk that the the measure is finite. Okay, uh, if it's not finite, then uh, you have to introduce some kind of special weight. Okay, so, but, but that that part is somewhat technical, so let me skip that. So the idea is well, first you have to compute some kind of some substitute of uh, mean curvature. So I would say it's approximate approximate mean curvature vector for this set, okay, for gamma zero. Okay, so that, that's, that's a challenge that we have to do. Okay, even though this guy doesn't even have perhaps first variation bounded. Okay, so that's, the thing is, what you can do is you can do um, some kind of dis smoothing, okay. So uh, let, okay, uh, epsilon be Fixed, very small number, P fixed. And let phi to be um, this function, phi epsilon of x to be a um, function. Uh, let, let me uh, just write it and explain the meaning. So 2 pi epsilon square n plus 1 over 2 exponential of minus x square over 2 epsilon square. Now here, uh, this c epsilon and eta, eta is really a cutoff function. Okay, so eta is, eta is just a cutoff function, uh, which is one, and let's say up to one half, and then uh, become zero by one. Okay, so this eta is this function. And the C epsilon is chosen so that, C epsilon is uh, chosen so that this integration on Rn plus one, which is really, uh, you, you just need to integrate all vol, vol radius one, of course, because of this cutoff function, uh, become one, okay? And uh, this is really like a you know, Gaussian kernel. And uh, as you, I think everybody knows that this behaves like a delta function as epsilon goes to zero. So I just point out that this function 
if you think this as a measure, uh, converges to delta function, okay, uh, as epsilon goes to zero. So I use this as a modifier, okay, and in fact, there's some interesting aspect that I, I use this particular kind of modifier, and uh, in fact, there's some very imp some of interesting reason that I use this modifier. You know, not, it's not the any modifier, but this particular modifier of Gaussian type, kernel type. Which I actually, is, for me, it's kind of mysterious why this, this is the this is, uh, case. Somehow, I, I, that this is something I don't quite fully understand, even though I know it works. Okay, so I use this modifier to get, um, right, let's see. Now, I, I, as I said, I want to compute the mean curvature vector, like things. So uh, I, I always uh, use some kind of motivation talk. So now recall this uh, formula five, which is the first variation formula from yesterday. You know, the, the, oh, maybe I should write this divergence uh, g the minus of h dot g. This is the one huh? from yesterday. I use this formula. Now, if uh, so, uh, let's see. I use this now. Um, I use in this vector field G to be uh, this particular, oh, maybe I should first say that. Now fix, fix Y, fix Y, and the fix index I, okay, which is one to N plus one, okay. And now use, uh, let, this vector field g of x to be the following. So that's zero except for i's component. And here i's component, I use this um, modifier, x minus y. Okay, here is i's, i's component, and the, the rest is all zero. Okay, I use this vector field g. So basically, I sort of stick in the delta function to this first variation formula. Okay, and then uh, let's see what happens. Divergence of the uh, tangent, tangent space GX is uh, by definition is uh, from J1 to N plus one. And uh, let's see, this is a projection matrix to the tangent space by epsilon DXJ. Uh, that's what you get at least x minus y, okay, just by, by definition that divergence is this one. And let's see, um, oh, I, yeah, I, I want to repeat that. This is really a matrix representing the orthogonal projection to the tangent space, okay, so that's component of ij component. That's uh, by definition, that's what, what it is. Now, you use this formula in this no, equation five, yeah? All right, now, just for motivation, not motivational purpose, let's assume, okay, assume that this gamma is actually uh, C2, okay, for, for the moment, so that you have a well-defined mean curvature vector, right? You have this formula in a classical sense. You stick in, and then you, get the following, so this equation five gives you the uh, Tx gamma, Ij, D phi, if shown Dxj, x minus y, okay, summation here, with respect to j, uh, Dhn, x is equal to uh, minus gamma of uh, h gamma, here's, now, uh, in a product of G and the H, so uh, you end up having only the i's component of the mean curvature, vector, mean curvature. Okay, so that's what you get. Right? Okay, if you assume it's C2. Right, and then, um, now note that, I, I do some sort of strange things, but I, please bear with me. So I divide this both sides by um, this 
function and plus epsilon just just to avoid the zero division. Okay, so I do divide both sides. Okay, I do something strange. Now, something you notice is that when epsilon goes to zero, you see, uh, since this, this, this is uh, concentrated at x equal to y, right? I mean, this is really Gauss kernel. So this, this, became, this function is more or less like h gamma i of y, okay? Because, because this function is almost zero outside y. So uh, this, this one, if when epsilon goes to zero, should converge to minus h i gamma of y. Okay, if if gamma is c two, fine. Uh, now, uh, okay, and also I guess y is in gamma. I guess if it's not in gamma, then. Uh, if it's not in gamma, then uh, let's see. So then uh, this, guy, this guy is like really exponentially small outside of gamma, and this one is uh, also small. But you have this issue, so uh, it converges to zero if y is not in gamma. Okay. Clear? I hope that's that's clear. Okay. So this is C two case. Now, I can use this as a motivation to define the approximate mean curvature by using the left-hand side, in fact. Okay, so, that's, so I can take this. Okay, so this, note that this quantity, this quantity is actually well-defined for even for country and survival set because all you have to have for this to be make sense is the fact that you have this tangent space almost everywhere. You see, the country and rectifiable set does have a, this notion of the tangent space almost everywhere. That's the things I told you yesterday. Yeah? This country and rectifiable set does have the approximate tangent space almost everywhere. So this makes sense. So I take this side as the approximate mean causal vector, okay? which makes sense even for gamma, which is just country and rectifiable. Okay? So I take this as, um, I define it to be, uh, right, so, Let's see. So motivated by this, what I just said is that, um, okay, so let's see. I, so this is definition 2.1, is that uh, I take this as a definition H tilde I of epsilon gamma of Y, okay? Oh, sorry, minus, I guess. Yeah, since we have minus sign there. So yeah, you take this as a definition of my approximate mean coverage vector. Well, I, I guess the ith component, ith component of approximate mean coverage vectors, and then I, of course, define I, uh, H tilde epsilon gamma uh, to be uh, j just the one that, that you, you um, have this component. Okay. So I, 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 I'm given this approximate mean curvature vector. This seems like a slightly ad hoc thing, but uh, let me continue. Note that this guy is actually C infinity vector field. Because um, any uh, differentiation falls onto this y, right? And this is smooth function, and I, as well here is so also. So it's a smooth vector field, which if this gamma is a C, nice C2 surface, should converge to the real mean coverage vector. But if not, then you know this this may not converge at all. Maybe quite wild, if if it's not. And also um, the, for reason that it will be clear. Uh, also, I need to define another uh, approximate mean curvature vector, which is an another modification uh, of this H uh, epsilon gamma. 
OK, uh, Y and, oh, sorry, here's X. I do uh, another modification. X this time, OK, Y X. OK, so if I define this without tilde, yeah, OK. And let's, let me call this as equation 7. Uh, continuing uh, numbering from yesterday. You will see right away. <laughs> okay, yes. So just a moment, yeah, uh, two more lemmas. <laughs> There's a good reason to do this. Yeah, all right. So now let me give you a lemma, just a preliminary lemma. And let's see. Uh, so first things, uh, I, I need to uh, estimate how they behave. So. Uh, this one is a relatively uh, uh, simple one, but I, I just want to uh, point out this property of this modifier. If you modify, if you differentiate this modifier, uh, you can actually estimate that this is less than equal to some constant depending on j and epsilon to um, minus 2j phi itself. And also, there's some uh, error time that comes from the uh, cutting, uh, cutting of um, truncation. Okay, so this is for j, one, two, three, so forth. Okay, so that's one uh, lemma I need. Okay, so this is uh, probably not so di difficult to see, but whenever you differentiate this function, well. Uh, well, when you differentiate this, this guy comes out, and then you have an Ipsion square division. And uh, well, x is kind of bounded because of this truncation. And when you differentiate this truncation part, then this, this, is, um, this is constant near the origin, so uh, this term is exponentially small. Okay? So uh, uh, you get this kind of uh, estimate. Okay? And uh, also, uh, Using this, uh, you can show the following. For, for rectifiable um, gamma uh, with finite ma measure, uh, the, uh, this approximate mean curvature behaves like the following. Now, let's see, the soup of um, Ipsion square and this approximate mean curvature, and also Ipsion to the force of the derivative of uh, approximate mean curvature. This is bounded by um, basically constant depending on dimension and one plus Ipsion times uh, measure. Okay, so. Okay, if which I yeah, like to put number eight. Okay. Well, how can you see this? Uh, because, let's see, I, I think by if you can probably see this. You see, um, this is true for just a country rectifier set, okay? Well, the reason is the following. So basically, if you want to bound this from above, well, this is a projection matrix, so it's, it's a bounded, you know, bounded nice. Uh, you can bound this by some constant, depending on the dimension. And this is derivative, but derivative behaves like that. So uh, you have this, uh, here's epsilon to minus 2 comes out. And, uh, well, but you have the same thing in the denominator, so, uh, the, so this, uh, this, 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 this differentiation part become like 1 over epsilon square bounded. And then uh, also, uh, you have to differentiate this guy. Uh, oh, OK, sorry, no. Um, and also, uh, yeah, I, I think you have to take care of this guy, this, which is exponentially small. But uh, that, 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 is, uh, uh, that is bounded by that exponentially small guy and, and also the, uh, this measure of this gamma. Okay. So uh, you, can, you have uh, some kind of control. Okay. It, it, as if goes to 0, 
this quantity may blow up, but it doesn't blow up too fast, like this, as, as, as fast as this. Okay? And also somewhat important is uh, this right-hand side depends on the size of the measure. Okay? Now, this is a nice quantity which you have so, sort of control for mean curvature flow because mean curvature flow is the one that this is supposed to be decreasing. So, you know, this, this right-hand side is kind of well-behaved. I hope it makes sense. Yeah? Now, the, lemma, the next lemma is the one that uh, answers the uh, Francesco's uh, question, maybe. So, 2.2 .2 is that uh, we have the following nice formula. Okay, so we have the um, formula, which is nice looking. This mean curvature, approximately mean curvature. If you integrate after taking divergence, okay, so that's divergence of this approximate mean curvature, is equal to minus of, uh, here's the integration over Rn plus 1, of H tilde of epsilon gamma square, and then uh, quantity plus epsilon of dx, where this phi epsilon is really a convolution. Uh, gamma is is the um, is nothing but just um, something you saw in the um, definition of the approximate mean curvature vector. Okay. Okay. So this formula holds. I'll check this for you in a moment. Um, now, now, formally, what this is is the following. This is really the analogy of um, the first variation formula, or this guy, with g being equal to mean curvature vector. Okay, so let me point out that this formula is anal analogous to, you see, here, if you use mean curvature as your first variation vector field, h, here's h square, minus sign, right? Exactly this is the same thing. That is, here's a divergence of your approximate mean curvature integrated over the gamma, and that this right-hand side is not exactly like that, but you see here's a square of mean curvature, but with tilde sign. Here is, is somehow the smoothed out measure, surface measure, and as epsilon goes to zero, it's supposed to sort of converge to real surface measure, right? Well, here's an extra epsilon, epsilon but. Right, okay, let's see this um, proof. Actually, it's very easy, surprisingly. It's just a Fubini theorem. Okay, so let's see. Maybe I should put this number nine. Yeah use it later. So um, proof is, um, okay, so let's just compute its uh, divergence of this right-hand side, All right? This just, uh, by definition, this is equal to uh, divergence of this means um, ij equal to one to n plus one of tx gamma, Ij and the h uh, i epsilon gamma dxj. That's what this is. Right. That's just I. I uh, the di divergence of this is precisely this. I mean, differentiating this and then projecting the sum in tangent space. Fine. Now, next, I plug in the definition of this h i. Okay, so that's equal to gamma of uh, Tx gamma Ij, and then let's see. So differentiating of this Hi, you see, note that this is what we have here, okay? Now, if you differentiate this quantity with respect to X, derivative falls onto this one, right? So you have, um, Let's see, so R n plus one and uh, H tilde 
epsilon gamma uh, i, I guess, I know, i, and uh, let's see, so here's y, and differ differentiating this one. It's just I'm just substituting the, the you know definition. Yeah. Now do a change of integration, Fubini theorem. Okay, so instead of first differentiate uh, integrating y, but you integrate with respect to x first. What happens? Okay, here's x dependence. Um, here's x dependence, right? So note that this is really um, this guy integrated is precisely equal to this one. Notice that, that they are the same, right? You see, this is integrated with respect to gamma, t projection here, and this quantity. So it's precisely this one. So, but you, you have this division, so uh, you have to multiply it. So you get, in, that's, that's it basically though. Um, so, that's, so this is equal to basically um, integration over Rn plus one, the uh, y, and then inside is just uh, h to the i epsilon gamma y. And then as I said, this quantity is, this quantity integrated over y is just h to the i epsilon gamma times this uh, denominator, which is what we had. Okay, um, okay, that's it, yep. So, oh, maybe with minus i, I think, yeah, minus is, comes from definition of this. So here's minus of Rn plus one, h to the gamma square and the, this modifier, okay? Why? Okay? So that's it. That's a proof, okay? And, uh, well, one, one reason I had to do this, another modification is to, to get this formula right, okay? Fine. hope that this makes sense. Now, so we, are, we, we have this um, approximate mean curvature vector, which have a relatively nice property, at least at this, as far as we see. So we use it by using this uh, approximate mean curvature. And uh, so let me try uh, some nice, so this, so what I'm going to do, it's going to, uh, it's not going to work actually, <laughs> just I warn you. But, as, so as a first try, let me do this. Let me do the following. Okay, so as, as I say, as I say, uh, this does not work in fact. So, okay, so this sort of naive first try. <laughs> naive first try. Using um, this approximate mean curvature. Okay. Um, gamma. So naively, we can do the following. So first, we fix if shown very small, and then, uh, so I, I, I want to do this sort of step-by-step -step construction okay, of, of, the mean, of, of the approximate mean curvature vector. So let, let delta t to be the time step that I, I, I want to take. So, and and uh, for some reason, I, I'll tell you, I, I want to take this time step to be very small. Uh, for example, uh, let's see, delta t be, T be uh, epsilon to 12, for example. It doesn't matter very much, but uh, much smaller than epsilon. Now, so we are given gamma zero, which is uh, so given. Now, what we can do is we can define using this approximate mean curvature vector uh, some kind of um, motion, which is reasonably uh, considered to be the following, this h times epsilon gamma, okay, of x. So this is a map, th this part is identity map, plus you kind of shift 
you know, this, um, uh, by this mean curvature vector. Now, so starting from starting from this uh, gamma zero, uh, we can set gamma, the next step delta t gamma gamma to be the uh, image of the um, gamma zero under this approximate mean curvature vector. Okay? So you, you move by this approximate mean curvature a little bit. And just inductively, repeat this. Okay? Just repeat this zero um, approximate motion. Uh, gamma of the previous step of gamma k delta t. Okay, for our k is one, two, three, four. At least you can try this. Okay, just that's quite reasonable. Now, if you do this, uh, let me give you the lemma what this does. Right, so. So the lemma, lemma 2.3 is the following. So for, I'll just uh, take um, first step maybe uh, for gamma. So let's let's see what what first step does. Okay, uh, we have the following: change of mass. So the formula is following. So the, how that change, what is the change of the, uh, the, uh, the mass, the, the uh, surface measure? Uh, let's see. Okay, this comes out to be the following. So let's see, gamma zero, divergence of Tx gamma zero, H of epsilon gamma zero, Thk, DHN. This is bounded by a, a constant thing on dimension times delta t square. And uh, let's see, um, derivative of h square times uh, hn of gamma zero. So this holds. Okay. Right? So you, you had this little motion by mean curvature. Okay, you move by mean curvature. And the change of the uh, surface, me surface measure is, is, it can be computed like this. And so basically, the change is just given by the first variation of this mean curvature, which is sort of expected because you, you, know, you move by the mean curvature. So the change of the area should be given by you know, divergence of that. And the error can be estimated by this quantity. That's quadratic in, a, in the size of the time step. Okay? So let's, let, let me show you why. This is pretty, uh, you can probably guess uh, uh, easily, but let me just do it. OK, so the proof. I should put this number 10. So proof of 10 is that, uh, OK, uh, because of the number 8, OK, use, well, let's see. Oh, yeah, so because of 8, well, first things one notice is that uh, this map is uh, actually a different morphism. Okay. Uh, this map, F epsilon gamma zero, is a C infinity diffle. You see, notice, well, because you see uh, this, as I told you, this H has at most like one over epsilon square size, right? And this, this delta T is much smaller, epsilon to say 12 or something. And also the derivative of this 
vector field is at most one over epsilon to the, uh, to the fourth, for example. So because of this delta t, st still stays small. So, so the C1 norm, so the point is the identity map minus f, this C1 norm is actually very, very small. Okay, so this is like epsilon to something like, I don't know, 10 maybe or 8 or something. Anyway, so that, that's almost like identity map, and uh, it's a different morphism. It's smooth vector field. So um, that's, that's one thing, okay? So this is different morphism. And then, uh, well, we can use the um, so-called uh, area formula for this. Okay, so this is the uh, image of this different morphism. So by area formula, which is valid for a rectifiable set also, can be rectifiable set. This can be computed as gamma zero of the Jacobian. So I, let me use this notation. This means Jacobian restricted to the tangent space of the uh, gradient of f, okay? And integrate it over this surface. Okay, so that's, that's the first variation. Uh, sorry, uh, the area formula. That's, I think if you don't know, please buy this. Okay, so it's just a computing the Jacobian by restricted to this tangent space. And this quantity now, as, as you see there, is, is really is identity map plus the uh, delta t times the nabla of h, right? That's a great gradient of that, this. As you can see, that's x plus you know, delta t times h, so that's what it is. And uh, so, uh, now, this is, uh, so how, how do you compute the Jacobian? Um, restricted to the tangent space is uh, something that you know the formula. So, um, that is, uh, right, so uh, this uh, comes out to be, uh, if you compute this, this, the first order term is one, okay, because coming from the identity, now you, you, what you do is Jacobian is really, uh, uh, computing the determinant. And the first order term with respect to delta t is now is, is, a, uh, is a divergence precisely of this, um, uh, let's see, h, okay? That's, that's the uh, first order term with respect to this uh, delta t. I think if you have done this kind of first variation computation, then I must show you, you've seen this. And the, uh, the rest is the, um, you can, you can bound the rest by the quadratic term, okay? And uh, let's see, um, also the derivative of h sub square, okay? So that's, you have to do a little bit of estimate, but, but this can be done. All the rest are higher order. So in particular, you can bound by this quantity. Right, um, and so that's just, uh, uh, that's a result, really, gamma zero plus this delta t times this divergence of this h restricted to this standard space. And the rest is this order, you know, this that's just t square, h square, and the me measure. Yeah? Or, well, maybe I should, I, pretty, yeah, it's not quite right, but Anyway, so this you can you can actually look at the difference, and then you can bound it by by this times constant. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's the idea. Yeah. So that's a proof of this. Yeah. Now, note that this this could be very large, but still you have this quadratic delta t square. So this remains extremely small still. Okay. The error can be quite small. You can estimate this. Okay. Now, uh, combining these two lemma, okay, so combine, and then you end up having this following. Lemma 2.1, 2.2 and 2.3. You see, notice that we had the formula for this quantity. Not, remember that this, this quantity you can Replace it by mean capital square term, right? We have this lemma 2.2. .2. So we have this nice, very nice formula for um, mean 
curvature flow on. Right, so this is the lemma 2.4. Is that uh, for all sufficiently small epsilon, It uh, doesn't have to be so, all that so small, actually, but uh, we have the following um, estimate of the change. This is less than equal to uh, 1 plus epsilon square delta t in hn of gamma 0 and minus delta t rn plus 1 approximately mean curvature, but with tilde sign, square, gamma zero plus epsilon dx, okay? It's just a follow from these two lemmas, really, uh, substituting um, this in, you know, this, you can replace it by h square term that from the, coming from previous lemma. Right, and then this this guy, um, note that this is, um, as I said, this is like one over epsilon to the fourth, and this delta t is extremely small, so that you can bound this whole things by, for example, something like this. This can be bounded by epsilon square delta t, for example, something like that, and so uh, by use, by doing that, uh, you end up having this extra term, okay? But that that's all. Okay, so this, this is true, right? Um, now, okay, so maybe I put this number 11. Any, any question? I, I think, I hope this is, yes? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. I think we, we end the, ends, when was it? Oh, okay, that's about it. Okay, okay, thanks, yeah. Sorry about this. Um, Right, I guess I almost finished what I wanted to do. And, uh, okay, just a minute. Uh, now, you can repeat this. You know, this is like really the first step. And then after that, you can repeat this. And uh, see, notice that this behave more like a mean curvature flow with this quadratic mean curvature square, you know, with negative sign. So you know that this is more or less decreasing. And uh, repeating this, you um, can actually show that uh, this is less than equal to uh, 1 plus epsilon square delta t to the um, k h of gamma 0, which you can bound by e to the epsilon square k delta t times h gamma 0, okay? By just repeating these uh, um, things, yeah? So you have this sort of uniform mass bound from this, right? Okay, and now, but as I told you, actually this seems like a nice nice uh, scheme, but there's some serious problem doing this, actually. Um, and, uh, sorry, serious problem with this scheme, okay? So um, the p problem is that, you notice that this map is always diffeomorphism. See this F, this map F of epsilon gamma, by definition, or by the estimate, this guy is diffeomorphism. So this does not induce any kind of topological change at all. So, the, but the, the solution we want is actually the one that has a topological change after all. So uh, actually this is not a good scheme, and I'm going to t tell you tomorrow is that actually you need to insert some non-diffeomorphic change in each step, in fact which induces uh, topological changes that you want. So um, that, that's uh, what I'd like to describe to you all. So, but this is a, a first step, which is not, uh, for, is not good, but oh, close. <laughs> yeah, okay, thanks. Sorry for the late.